Hey there, how's it going? Okay, I uh, just took a bunch of photographs of my new guitar. It's a Flamenco Negra. Uh, it's a Red Mountain Cedar back and sides, uh, Engelman Spruce Top. And there it is over there. I'm going to flip it around and do a proper video. Uh, I'm going to do a video of the case as well. The cases are excellent that I get. Okay, just give me a minute. Okay, I'm back. Okay, yeah, I'm just doing that, obviously, just out of my deck where I do a lot of my work. This is my work table. I put some blue cloth. It's a little bit marked up. Anyway, so this is what, this is my first flamenco guitar. First guitar, actually. Um, really happy with it. I, I actually have a small performance thing to do on Sunday, so there's a bit more of the French polish I want to do, but I kind of wanted to hold off on it because I'm going to screw around with it for a bit, so... Uh, I'll get back and do a, f a day or two more of, of the backs and sides, I think. I just want to fill it a bit more. This is, anyway, not fill it, but just polish it up a bit more. So here we go. Engelman spruce top. The bridge... Ooh, I'm not going to say it's the only bridge of this wood, but it might be. It's a wood called Maidak, and my friends uh, who own the house I live in uh, P. Ad, he gave me a chunk of this Midak, and it's, he said you might not ever say, see another piece of this again in your life. So it's extremely rare. It's not cut or anything, I don't think. Anyway, and I also did the head plate with the same wood. It's just gorgeous. But I, because it's a special wood, I use it on instruments that I know I'm going to keep. So I'm going to keep this flamenco guitar for my own playing. And I also made an eagle uh, of the same wood, you know. I don't have a lot of it, so I have to be very careful. Um, but anyway, it's kind of in honor of them and, and thinking of them while I do it. And the uh, fretboard, fingerboard, is Makassar Mac Ebony. It's really beautiful. Um, let's see if we can get some... You can get it with a fair bit of visible striations, you could call it. And I asked for... Um, more than last, you know. Um, here's the rosette I did. It's a little bit unusual. Uh, usually uh, classical and flamenco rosettes are um, kind of more like a mosaic, you know, with the, the, the pieces of wood, the end grain you see. And with this, uh, I wanted to experiment this with an idea of a design that I use a lot in things, pieces I do, you know. Um, anyway, it's the pieces of, it's a, it's a also, it's bloodwood and flame maple veneer, but, but it's what we're seeing is it on edge, you know what I mean? So I cut it to about two millimeters and make the rosette, thin it down, install it, and then try to smooth it out a bit. There's a few, there's a bit of openings here that I want to fill in a bit more with, with more polishing and stuff. Anyway, again, this is my learning instrument, you know. It's a really beautiful, I'm so happy with it. Uh, yeah, so this is the... Uh, Engelman spruce back and the bridge is a 12 hole bridge. I don't know if you can see that in there. Let me see if I can focus. Yeah, yeah. so it's a little bit different the way it's wound. So I really like this style. Ah, uh, okay, so we'll flip her around. Here's the side, here's the upper side. Red Mountain Cedar. It's a cypress type wood, which makes this, does make it a Blanca, although it's darker than, say, Spanish cypress or Canadian cypress, which I, I'd like to use that as well. Uh, anyway, I, I was quite chuffed with this, and I, I know where I bought the wood, they didn't have a lot of, a lot of it in stock, so I thought I'd get two. The next instrument I will make, will this have this as well, you know? And, um, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, the binding is also unusual. What it is, let's see if I can get close here. What it did is, okay, first of all, say, say right in the waist there, that's my dang. So I also wanted to use a bit of my dang, so I'm using local woods, special for this instrument, you know? Um, and I just cut the my dang binding myself, you know, it's just by hand. It's, it's not perfect, but I got it, got it going pretty good. Anyway, this here is the same blood wood, the same wood, the flamed 
maple and bloodwood that I used here, I just wanted to replicate it, you know? I wanted to uh, reference it, I guess, or just you know, copy it, whatever. So it's basically, and these are all like 0.6 millimeters thick, so it's bloodwood, maple, bloodwood, and then maple on the outside, which actually puts it a little wide in places, but you know, I, I cut the binding channel by hand, you know, I'm not using a machine. So of course, half a millimeter could easily go off. So I, this just came to me while I was working on it. And I thought, oh, if I just sand this down, there's a slight unevenness and that some of the white will stay and some go. So that's how I got this really beautiful, sort of somewhat random, not totally. I was new, kind of knew what I was doing, believe it or not, uh, pattern. It makes me think of, uh, of an Appaloosa or a paint horse, you know, while I was doing it. Oh, yeah. Anyway, here we go with the back. Same wood, red mountain cedar. It's a wood from Peru. Uh, as far as I know, you know, the stuff that, look, you can see the reflection, eh? Woohoo! You <laughs> can see the trees in the reflection. It's, uh, it's harvested, if you want to use that word, sustainably, you know? Um, which is great. I'd really like to continue using it. Like, my idea is to um, uh, work on a theme, you know, so I really want to work with these woods. And so for sure, my next in instrument, which will be for sale, um, see if I can break that up a bit, uh, will be the same woods, you know? Uh, let's see, it might be a different thing. Um, the neck is Port Orford Cedar, which is really nice. Like. Yeah. I'll just keep using it as long as I can get it. It's, n it's not really rare or anything. And you'll see, look at the peg head. There's no tuning machine at work here. This is the traditional, let's see if we can get some angles here. This is the traditional flamenco way of tuning. Um, there's a couple reasons why it's common. Partly, it was just for cost, you know, back in the day. Because they've had mach guitar machines for quite a long time, actually. And, uh, but I think, you know, one advantage was, you know, uh, not a lot of money to be had. Let's see if we can pick this up a bit. Not a lot of money, so you can make your own pegs. And actually, if, if you're looking at my pictures I've been putting up on Facebook and stuff, you'll, you might have noticed that the pegs are different. I made some original pegs out of um, tamarind, which is a really nice creamy white wood. But, uh, yeah didn't really, there was not enough rotational strength in it, I would say. So when I turned the pegs, there was too much give. Um, so I decided to go with the ebony, which I actually bought. And what I did with this is I uh, drilled holes in the ebony pegs and made little inserts of, um, inserts, let's see, get it out in the sun more, so you can get some more. Yeah, you can see the fingerboard more here. So inserts of um, inserts of ant uh, deer antler from when I was tanning deer hides out of New Brunswick. I've had these pieces for a while. So anyway, I'm incorporating some interesting stuff for, and because it's a personal instrument, this is the kind of thing I was going with, you know? Yeah. Anyway, I guess that's good. Oh, I should, I'm going to do another video of me, with me playing properly, but here I'll just strum it. It's great, it's, it's loud, I love the brightness. Let's see if I can, can't hold the camera in. Couldn't be more thrilled with the sound. It's at least on par with my, I mean I had a really beautiful Gritlaskin flamenco. Flamenco uh, Negra, which is uh, with a rosewood back and sides, uh, quite a while ago. Sold that a while ago. And I also had a really, really gorgeous Yeri uh, flamenco from Japan with uh, friction pegs as well. That was a really beautiful guitar. And it was funny how prices and stuff. Anyway, it was not that, well, okay, it was seven or eight hundred dollars, but that was 25 years ago. So I guess, you know, <laughs> that was a fairly pricey instrument. Anyway, yeah, so I'm, for me, I love this sound as much as I love my Laskin and 
you know, Laskin is one of the greatest guitar makers in the world. Very famous for his inlay work. Um, yeah. Anyway, this is exactly what I wanted to make. I was thrilled that the sound was as good, is as good as it is. Just thrilled. I'm brighten that up a bit. Yeah. Anyway, I'll do a proper, let me just flip this. Yeah, anyway, I'll do a proper, I'll do a proper um, video with me playing uh, soon, probably next week, after this concert. My chops are, uh, ooh, not great. I uh, haven't really been playing, haven't been playing guitar. I didn't have a guitar for years. You know, I sold it to go on my long ride. And also, then I, anyway, to pay for the ride really is what, when I sold my Laskin. Anyway, so I was really thrilled to get a new guitar going and really thrilled by making my own and super thrilled that I'm going to make them and sell them and stuff. Yeah, okay. So maybe what I'll do, I'll stop this and then do a video on the case. 